Come along. We're off to tour the distillery. Starting a massive fire would get you in a heap of trouble at most jobs, but at the Jack Daniel Distillery, it's an essential part of what they do. The whiskey-soaked pallets of hard sugar maple are burned to make the charcoal, which gives Jack Daniels the smoothness it's known for. Every bottle of Jack Daniels sold around the world is made with water from this source. The water contains no sediment, no impurities, just clean, pure spring water. Drawing 800 gallons of water per minute, Jack Daniel purchased the hollow for $2,148. You can't help notice during the tour that the buildings, pipes, equipment, even the leaves of plants and trees and rocks are covered in what appear to be black soot. They have all actually been tainted by Bodwanya copniacensis, a whiskey fungus that's found near distilleries. This type of fungus uses ethanol for its nutrition. You can even see the fungus on the barrel houses, each of which holds about 20,000 barrels or a million gallons of whiskey. Jack Daniels is the top selling brand of American whiskey in the world. Nearly 100 million bottles of the core black label bottles of Jack Daniels are produced and sold each year. Millions more are produced of specialty products such as flavored whiskeys and Gentleman Jack. Tour finished up with a memorable stop at the historic Barrel House 114 which was originally built in 1938. Here we lingered over and sipped five of their most popular whiskies and liqueurs. I really enjoyed the tour. I'm, I'm not a big alcohol drinker, but it was really interesting to see the process, how things were done, the smells, the aromas, the different tastes of the five or six that we tried. This was an awesome tour. We really enjoyed it, and it was just a... Oh, shoot. Um, Fantastic, you know. I love the history here, too, and the actual outlay of the whole buildings are just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> for the muggle as a distraction from geocaching and <laughs> before noon we need food <laughs> yeah and then the, the whole personal touch that you know that it's still done by people it's not just an automated process assembly line it's good what a way to enhance a geocache oh we had a great time going through all the buildings and finding out about all the fermentation process and then we got to taste the whiskey yeah. and, and that was very interesting too because we talked about the different kinds of whiskey and how mm. it's flavored yeah it was very very good and i know i don't like flavored whiskeys that rye rye was fantastic it's time to get the cash yeah but before we get the cash we want to mention something a little different about this one something quite special this cache was created by Joe GPS. Joe GPS created the first Geo Woodstock. And through the years, he's become known as the godfather of Geo Woodstock. And unfortunately, we lost Joe to geocaching a number of years ago. And here are a few people to give some words about Joe and what he meant to geocaching. 
Hi, this is Tom Brotherman, Electric Water Boy, and my wife Cheryl, Crazy for Cats, is filming this. And we're in Selma, Texas. We finally came across Joe GPS at Jill Woodstock 12 in St. Charles. Didn't know who he was, but he handled our registration and gave us everything. He was like the nicest guy in the world. But I had no clue who he was until one of our friends came and told us. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Next year at uh, Woodstock 13, I went up to him and talked about an idea of smaller states working together to put on Woodstock some year, and he thought that was a pretty cool idea. Uh, he talked about how people from after Hurricane Katrina moved to his area, and they all became friends, and you know some of them moved back, but some stayed there, and life went on. You know, they went to each other's kids' graduations and weddings, and eventually they went to some funerals too. But you know, they had a lot of great friends after all that. A week after that, that, that he passed away. You know, we put Woodstock on. Cheryl and I and six of our friends put Woodstock on in, in Fort Worth this past summer. I got to think Joe would have been proud of the way we did it and, and things we did. And really looking forward to Geo Woodstock 18 and uh, Abbotsford, Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. It's hard for me to get that out. I learned to go from y'all to A. And, all right. See y'all there. Monkey Brad here. Been geocaching for about 17 years, a volunteer reviewer for 11 of those. Now I'll talk about Joe GPS. And man, what do you say about Joe? Joe was everybody's buddy. He was one of my best friends and a great mentor. If it weren't for him, I never would have stayed around the game so long. For us here at home, he was one of the best hiders that we ever saw. He just did amazing, amazing things. He was a volunteer reviewer, one of the earliest, uh, helped create many of the guidelines that we follow today. I mean, truly one of the founding fathers of the sport. And there's no like one story or one thing, I mean, there's just too many things to say about Joe, but when you want to like distill his essence, to me, the big thing is community. Like Joe got people. And Joe like understood that if you could get people together, the game would take care of itself. So whether it was when he created the second oldest geocaching organization in the world, or when he put together Geo Woodstock, just so people could get some faces to go with those names they see online became the world's first mega event. Still one of the largest events in the world, international now, the first US giga event. And it's still bringing people together and making them happy. And that's what Joe would have loved, to make sure that people were together and happy and taking care of each other. Miss you, buddy. My name is Joe Armstrong and my geocaching username is Joe GPS. I started geocaching in 2001 in uh, September. It was eight years ago, we had 75 people show up I did it in a town that was 150 miles from where I live. Uh, and I had a lot of help from uh, Show Me the Cash, Dear Mark and Daggy, uh, helped me put the first one on. The cost of the first one was less than $100. And we have grown now. It's not your mother's cashing event anymore, I promise you. For 75 people, for that point of time, even to be at one event was kind of unheard of. It was Jeremy, a lot of other people, and myself. Of course, Jeremy has all along said, this game is not about the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I was on the other side saying, sometimes it is about the numbers. Mm -hmm. High numbers people who want to meet each other, and that's how it all got started. Uh, over the years, that has changed for Geo Woodstock. It's still about the numbers, but it's about the number of friends you make, mm -hmm. the number of uh, smiles you get while you're just walking around. And it's all about just having a good time. Ah, I see it already. <laughs> if Jack Daniels is too strong, they say, go down a little lower. Right there. Right there. Right <clears throat> there. Oh, I was looking on the ledge. Assume this is the logbook. Is that a trackable? Hey, that's a trackable. I'm gonna pick that up. Cool. So this is the Jack Daniels cache, mm -hmm. right there at the Jack Daniels Distillery. Mm 
check this out. <laughs> right under the bridge. Don't forget to log this. <laughs> That was an awesome tour, oh, eh? Oh yeah, it was yeah. a lot of, really interesting to see yeah. all the buildings and yeah. go through the history. Yep, and it was really neat to get the cache, and it's not just basically, like, like sometimes the cache will, will take you some, like, the, a cache is a cache, but when the cache takes you somewhere mm, yes. and highlights a destination yep. like this. The, this is fun. Yeah, the Jack Daniels Distillery and the history of the area, really, really neat. Yep, love it. Keep watching, there's more caches to be found. And where will, ge and where where will, will geocaching, geocaching take, take you? you?